first spaceship on Venus, aka in German, Der Schweigende Stern, in Polish, Milczarka Gwiazda, literal English translation, the silent star, also known in English as Planet of the Dead and Spaceship Venus Does Not Reply, is a 1960 East German, Polish color science fiction film based on the 1951 science fiction novel The Astronauts by Stanislaw Lem. It was directed by Kurt Maitzig and stars Gunther Simon, Julius Ongaway, and Yoko Tani. The film, running 93 minutes, was first released by Progress Film in East Germany. After finding an ancient, long-buried flight recorder that originally came from a spaceship, apparently from Venus, a human spaceship is dispatched. The crew discovers a long-dead Venusian civilization that had constructed a device intended to destroy all life on the Earth prior to invasion. Before they could execute their plan, they perished in a global nuclear war. Topic. Plot In 1985 engineers involved in an industrial project to irrigate the Gobi Desert accidentally unearth a mysterious and apparently artificial spool. When found to be made of a material unknown on Earth, the spool is circumstantially linked to the Tunguska explosion of 1908. The spool is seized on as evidence that the explosion, originally blamed on a meteor, was actually caused by an alien spaceship. Professor Haringway deduces the craft must have come from Venus. The spool itself is determined to be a flight recorder and is partially decoded by an international team of scientists led by Professor Sakana and Dr. T. Chen Yu. When radio greetings sent to Venus go unanswered, Haringway announces that a journey to Venus is the only alternative. The recently completed Soviet spaceship Cosmostrator, intended to voyage to Mars, is redirected to Venus, a 30-31 day journey. During the voyage, Sakana works furiously to translate the alien message using the spaceship's computer. When the spaceship nears Venus, radio interference from the planet cuts the crew off from Earth. By then, Sakana's efforts lead to a stunning discovery. The spool describes a Venusian plan to irradiate the Earth's surface, with the extermination of mankind being the prelude to an invasion. Rather than containing a cosmic document, as had been expected, the spool bears a cold-blooded message of destruction. Haringway convinces the crew to press on towards Venus rather than return to Earth with news that would panic mankind. With the ship's robot, Omega, American astronaut Brinkman pilots a one-man landing craft. On the ground, he encounters an industrial complex and finds small recording devices that look like insects. The rest of the crew follows when Cosmostrator lands, but they find no Venusian life forms. Journeying across the planet, they find the remains of a deserted and blasted city centered around a huge crater, signs of a catastrophic explosion so intense that shadowy forms of humanoid Venusians are permanently burned on to the walls of the surviving buildings. The Venusians are gone, but their machines remain functioning, including the radiation bombardment machine intended for Earth. One of the scientists accidentally triggers the weapon, leading to a frantic effort by the Earthmen to disarm it. T. Chen Yu lowers Tolua, the ship's communication officer, into the Venusian command center. When T. Chen Yu's suit is punctured, Brinkman ventures out to save him. Before he can reach Yu, Tolua succeeds in reversing the weapon. Unfortunately, this also reverses Venus' gravitational field, flinging Cosmostrator into space. Brinkman is also repelled off the planet, beyond the reach of the spaceship, while Tolua and T. Chen Yu remain marooned on Venus. The surviving crew members must return to Earth, where they warn humanity about the dangers of atomic weapons. Topic. Cast Gunther Simon as Raymond Brinkman Robert in the U.S. release, the Cosmocrat's German pilot Julius Ongaway as Tolua, the African communications officer Yoko Tani as Dr. Sumiko Ogamura, the Japanese medical officer Aldrich Lukes as Professor Haringway Hauling, the American commander Ignacy Machowski as Professor Sultik Durand, a French engineer, in the U.S. release, the Polish chief engineer Mikhail N. Postnikow as Professor Arsenyu Orloff in the U.S. release, the Soviet cosmonaut Kurt Rackelman as Professor Sakana, an Indian mathematician Tang Hua Ta as Dr. Chen Yu Lao Su in the U.S. release, a Chinese linguist. Lucina Winokur as Joan Moran, television reporter. 
Eduard von Winterstein is a nuclear physicist. Ruth Maria Kubacek is Professor Arsenew's wife. Topic. Production In the film's original East German and Polish release the Earth spaceship sent to Venus is named Cosmocrater. The film was shot mostly in East Germany. The outdoor scenes were shot in the area of Zakopane, Poland and the airfield of Berlin Johannisthal and special effects in Babelsberg Studio and in a studio in Wrocław, Poland. The spaceship mock-up at the airfield was a matter of a newspaper hoax in Der Courier. The front page presented it as a failed attempt at spaceflight in the Soviet occupation zone. The film was noted for early extensive usage of electronic sounds on its soundtrack. Electronic music and noises illustrated the work of the computer that deciphers the alien message, the message itself, and the eerie landscape of Venus devastated by the nuclear catastrophe. Makarski, who produced the musical score, was assisted by sound engineer Krzysztof Slaferski from the experimental studio of Polish Radio, with some sound effects added at the laboratory of the Military Academy of Technology in Warsaw and with post-production at DEFA. When first released to European cinemas, the film sold 4,375,094 tickets. Topic. Reception In a retrospective on Soviet science fiction film, British director Alex Cox compared First Spaceship on Venus to the Japanese film The Mysterians, but called the former, "...more complex and morally ambiguous." Cox also remarked that, "...silent stars images of melted cities and crystallized forests, overhung by swirling clouds of gas, are masterpieces of production design." The scene in which three cosmonauts are menaced halfway up a miniature tower of Babel by an encroaching sea of sludge may not entirely convince, but it is still a heck of a thing to see." Stanislaw Lem, whose novel the film was based upon, was extremely critical of the adaptation and even wanted his name removed from the credits in protest against the extra politicization of the story compared to his original. Lem, it practically delivered speeches about the struggle for peace. Trashy screenplay was painted, tar was bubbling, which would not scare even a child. Topic. Awards 1964, Festival of Utopian Films, Triest, Utopisches Filmfestival Triest. Golden Spaceship Award. Das Goldin Raumschiff. Topic. Other releases Topic. United States In 1962 the shortened 79-minute dubbed release from Crown International Pictures substituted the title First Spaceship on Venus for the English-speaking market. The film was released theatrically in the U.S. as a double feature with the re-edited version of the 1958 Japanese kaiju film Varin the Unbelievable. All references to the atomic bombing of Hiroshima were edited out. The American character Hauling became a Russian named Orlov. The Russian character Arseniev became the American Herringway, while the Polish character Soltik became the Frenchman Durand. Some other versions of the film, differently cut and dubbed, were on the American market at the time. Spaceship Venus Does Not Reply and Planet of the Dead, the original, uncut version of the film was finally re-released in the U.S. in 2004 under its original title The Silent Star by the DEFA Film Library of the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Topic. In other media In 1980 a short sequence from First Spaceship on Venus was used as a film within a film in the low-budget feature Galaxina. In 1990 the film was featured in the second season of Mystery Science Theater 3000 and was released on DVD in 2008 by Shout Factory, as part of their MST3K 20th Anniversary Edition collection. In 2007 the film was shown on the horror-hosted television series Cinema Insomnia. Apprehensive Films later released the Cinema Insomnia episode on DVD.